In this mini lecture, I'll be speaking about user needs and user needs analysis. Collections should be built to meet the needs of user groups. Ranga Nathan's five laws of library science are a really useful point of reference for understanding the relationship between users and their needs and collections. The five laws of library science are, books are for use, every reader his or her book, every book its reader, save the time of the user, and the library is a growing organism. The first principle, books are for use, speaks to the basic premise of collection management. We build collections for our users to use. In most libraries, our concern isn't with the preservation of information resources, but on their use. With the exception of libraries with archival responsibilities, libraries build collections for the main purpose of meeting users' information and leisure needs. We put books on the shelves so that users will take them off the shelves and borrow them. We buy databases so that customers will mine them for information. We create maker spaces so that students will come in and create. The next principle, every reader his or her book, says that collections should be focused on user needs, that every reader has some desire or need that they could have fulfilled through material in the collection. It also suggests that the collection should cater for all readers. This principle can also be interpreted as a mandate for providing collections that do not prioritise the needs of one user group and that are developed in an objective, unbiased and uncensored manner. No matter who the reader is, no matter what their information need is, they should be able to access that information from the library. The third principle is every book its reader, which is the reverse of the second principle. The second and third principles are interlinked. This one tells us that for every book in the collection, there is someone who will want or need to read it. The fact that a book hasn't circulated doesn't mean that there isn't someone who wants to read it. It could mean, for an example, that we need to position it differently, promote it or market it. In fact, positioning, promotion and marketing are key factors in circulation, and we need to look at bookshop models to know that visual merchandising is important. The principle also highlights the role of the librarian in linking people to resources. Although the information is in the collection, the reader may need help to find it. This principle also suggests that librarians add value to the connection by connecting people with the information they need. So it's not just about having the book, but it's about identifying the book that a reader needs and connecting them with it. This principle also tells us that even if you're not personally interested in a, in, in a book, someone else will be, and it serves to remind us to be objective as selectors. The fourth principle is save the time of the user. It's fundamentally important to remember that librarianship is a customer service profession. We're here to connect customers with the information they need, and we're here to do that efficiently. There's been a real shift in librarianship in recent years, away from gatekeeping of collections towards providing access. A librarian's job isn't to protect collections, but to ensure collections are accessible and used. Information isn't a scarce commodity anymore. In fact, it's an abundant one. In this age of information abundance, the librarian's role is to organise information and to connect people with it efficiently and effectively. The fifth and final principle is that the library is a growing organism. You can see this already in the fact that this earlier discussion has focused largely on books, but could easily be applied to any other type of physical or digital resource. Collections change. They grow and evolve and require pruning. They never reach a finished state, but are constantly being developed as we collect more material. We're always buying new materials. Materials go off the shelves and out into people's homes and back again so that the collection as it appears on the library shelves is constantly changing. We also replace items and weed material from the collection. Add digital to this and a whole new layer of the growing organism is created. 
just as our users' needs change over time, so too must the collection change to meet those needs and the changing world around the library. What are users, needs and wants? The first step in learning how to ascertain and meet user needs is defining exactly what a user and a need and a want is. A user is someone who might use the library in some way. Typically, we consider users to be all of those people who have access to the library and who the library aims to serve. When we think about user needs, we must also consider people who don't use the library, but who belong to the community that the library serves. Non-users are often potential users. An example might be a student who has yet to discover that the library can help them with their studies. Another example in school libraries are parents or community members who may use the library, but not in the same way as students do. A need is a situation that requires a solution. It isn't necessarily a want. For example, I need to eat Brussels sprouts because they're good for me, but I definitely do not want to. A need can exist without a user realising it. Similarly, users can sometimes articulate what they think they need, but there's often more to it. For example, this scenario was shared recently in a Twitter discussion of patron requests. Do you have a copy of Laser Marvels? Um, what is it? It's French. Lots of singing. Is it fantasy? No, there's a movie with Hugh Jackman and Anne Hathaway. Laser Marvels. Ah, Les Miserables. Wants are things one is willing to expend time, effort or money to acquire. Wants are not necessarily good for us and may not be needed. For example, I want a cup of coffee each morning because I love it, but it's not necessarily good for me, and although I think I need it, I definitely do not. Demands are a little different. These are things that people are willing to act in concert to acquire. So people are willing to go out there, out of their way to acquire these things. A demand is more urgent or more persistent than a want or a need. They are things that people feel passionately about and that they will actively engage in getting. A need that is wanted and demanded. We need to meet the needs of users, but it's also important to satisfy users' wants and demands. We have the most impact where we satisfy needs that are also wanted or demanded, so it is important that we can position the library to satisfy these. At the same time though, we need to know about and be positioned to satisfy needs that aren't wanted or demanded. These aren't necessarily known to library users, particularly in school libraries, so it is important that we undertake research that helps us to understand who our users are, teachers, students or parents, and what their needs are. The next slides will explain the process for this. To understand our users and their needs, we need to conduct a user needs analysis. This includes exploring the characteristics of our user groups. Collections are essentially products, and in order to build collections that are useful to our customers, we need to employ some of the principles that service designers use. In particular, we need to think about our users as belonging to a different user groups. It is much easier to design for a person than an abstract idea. So segmenting our user groups is an important step in understanding who they are. In school libraries, we still have customers, even if they don't have a choice whether they come into the library or not. We need to collect information on our user groups, as well as the general community profile. Data sources for user needs analysis vary by the type of library. Regardless, we can break the data sources up into two groups existing data and data collected especially for the purpose of understanding user needs. It's important to collect information on all possible user groups of the library. In a school library, these might include students, staff and administration who may have different needs such as information about strategic management or educational trends rather than pedagogical or curricular resources. 
Our user groups might also include parents, families, and in some cases, the wider community. The types of information gathered should go beyond enrolment data to include languages spoken at home and at school, cultural groups represented, family data, including socioeconomic data and geographic location in relation to the school, the learning needs of the students, whether students have internet access at home as well as school, and community programs or resources that students and families might take advantage of, such as a local public library or a university library. Even details such as how students come to and from school, for example, via public transport, where they might use their mobile devices to access eBooks or audiobooks, or riding a bicycle, where there's not really a possibility to engage with resources at all on the way to school. All of this information helps us gather uh, an idea about our community profile. The data gathered will be qualitative through direct user input and quantitative data gathered from existing sources. The first type of data is collected specifically for the purpose of understanding our users. Libraries can and do ask users to tell them about it themselves and what they want from the library through surveys, interviews and focus groups. We can also talk to non-users to gain an understanding of why they don't use the library and what the library could offer to entice them to use it. Though it's important to note that non-users are generally harder participant groups to reach given they're not invested in the library. Quantitative data is easier to collect. Libraries and schools are very good at collecting data almost as a byproduct of daily operations. We have masses of data in our library management systems, including circulation data, which tells us about usage of the collection and allows us to track trends in usage over time. Libraries can also track attendance at programs, usage of service points, and even the number of people who walk through the doors. In addition, school data such as student achievement, school census data, and other sources are also useful to inform what is known about the library's users. When should we undertake a user needs analysis? The short answer is, it varies. Smaller scale user needs analyses may be carried out in alignment with curriculum planning cycles to support teachers during their planning with the most current and appropriate resources. Analysis should also be carried out when new collections are being planned. For example, if investing in a graphic novel collection or an ebook and audiobook collection. Finally, user needs analysis should happen informally on an ongoing basis. Staff in school libraries are uniquely positioned to develop an in-depth understanding of the students and the users of the library and their needs. By collating data about our users, we can develop a rich picture of them. By analysing the data, we can ascertain what their needs might be and use this insight to develop collections that will meet the needs of customers and therefore be more likely to be used, which is of vital importance when budgets are tight and choices need to be made.